This here is a brand new Garmin Fenix 8 Pro, and this is also the brand new Garmin Fenix 8 Pro, except one of these costs nearly twice as much as the other one. The good news is there's a bunch of new hardware features on both of them, including LTE connectivity, satellite connectivity, brighter displays, and plenty more. Now, I've just started putting these watches through their paces alongside my wife, who also has one of them on her wrist there as well, testing out all these features. So definitely hit the subscribe button on the bottom there for my full in-depth review down the road. So let's just simply dive into all the new features, starting off with the LTE connectivity or the cellular connectivity. Now, the very first feature here that you've got is LTE Live Track. This means that you can't take your phone, you can throw it in the water if you want to, whatever you want, just go for a run with purely the watch on and get automatic live tracking to your friends and family. If you use Garmin Live Tracking in the past on your uh, watch with your phone, you know that it basically sends out a link to your friends and family. They can click on that link, they can see the course that you've planned to run or ride or whatever it may be, as well as see where you are on that course. That all now happens over LTE as well. It's frankly as simple as that. Uh, you can pre-configure all that stuff ahead of time so it automatically sends it out as soon as you press the start button. The next LTE feature that they have here is the LTE text messaging. This allows you to text with friends and family uh, using the on-device keyboard or pre-canned messages. So you can see here where I'm texting back and forth with Des of Desfit uh, using a combination of pre-canned messages as well as ones from the little keyboard there. Now the way this works is when you send a message outbound, uh, it'll send that through Garmin servers and then go to the text message uh, phone number that you have on the other end. However, if that person has the Garmin Messenger app, then they have a lot more options for getting back to you, and it looks like it's coming from you as opposed to just a random Garmin number. It's not gonna have your actual phone number on it. Uh, it's gonna have basically a Garmin number on it. Uh, that's why you use a Messenger app to be able to send back and forth, and it's a much cleaner experience overall. The person on the other end does not have to have a Garmin Messenger account. They can just use that app and it's all like streamlined behind the scenes. The next piece you have is LTE check-ins, location check-ins. What this does is simply sends your current location to the person on the other end uh, with your current GPS coordinate. And that's really ideal if you maybe finish up a workout or something like that and want to say, hey, come pick me up here. Here is my location, right? Pretty straightforward. After that, you've got voice messaging. This allows you to send short voice messages back and forth uh, using the speaker and the microphone on the watch. So here's a little example of that where Des has sent me a message while I'm out on this run. Uh, and what's cool about this is that first, I'll get a transcription of that message via text. And then behind the scenes, it'll go ahead and download the full voice message for me to listen on the actual speaker. That was notable because I was in an area with not great cellular connectivity. So it took about like 30, maybe 60 seconds for that message to download in full on the voice side, but the text side came in almost right away. Yo man, I hope you are enjoying your first run with the Phoenix 8 Pro. Oh, I am so ready for dumplings. It is definitely dumpling time. But you're not limited to just text messages, you can also do full voice calls. So I'm gonna go right now and show you a bit of a demo between me and Des, where I'm just standing in the woods uh, on pure LT connectivity, two out of five bars, and here's what that sounds like. There you go, that's, that's the ticket right there. Can you hear me? I can hear you, I'm, I'm standing in the woods, I'm talking to you, and we're talking about baguettes. It's as simple as that, man. Oh my gosh, is the market open yet for baguettes? Uh, it has been open all day, and I have not been to the market. It's it's big at time soon here, but uh, I can hear you pretty clearly. You're actually pretty good. Um, this is uh, from the watch, and you're on your yeah. your phone, right? Yeah, I'm on my phone, and you sound quite clear to be honest with you. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually really surprised. Yeah. Uh, yep. There's not much crackling. You are, and you are clear as day in terms of the the audio quality. Yeah, I'm actually really surprised. 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 Yeah, Awesome. Thanks, man. It is a uh, beer and baguette time. Catch you later. <laughs> <laughs> As you can see, it's functional. It's not like as great as you'd expect from using you know, a Bluetooth headphone or something like that, but it is pretty good. It works in terms of being able to communicate back and forth what you may be doing. Now, the next item here is the ability to check the weather. So the weather app on your watch, you can go ahead and check the weather using LTE. After that, you get into kind of the emergency realm. There's two levels of emergency. First, there's the instant detection. That's when you crash your bike or trip while running, whatever the case is, and the accelerometer is triggered here, and it's gonna notify your emergency contacts. Uh, those are the ones that you define friends and family. That will work over LTE. So that piece there happens automatically uh, unless you cancel it out. So you've got usually about 10 seconds or so to hit cancel there. Um, otherwise it notifies your
your friends and family. The next piece though is the Garmin Response Center. Uh, so that's where you want to trigger a incident that's happened and you want it to go and call 911 in some capacity. So in that case, you can do emergency SOS to Garmin Response and they will arrange for 911 to come to you. Uh, for example, if you're out in the mountains or something like that, maybe in a weird spot where you can't just drive up to it, they'll do that. But I want to circle back to that in just a second under the satellite side of things. But first though, a couple of LTE housekeeping type things. Uh, the LTE in this watch is LTEM. Uh, that means that you can use the same watch going from Europe to the US or vice versa. So I'm in Europe right now. I can take this watch on Sunday when I fly to the US and I can use it there without any problems back and forth. That's different than some of Garmin's past watches, like their bounce watches, for example, uh, where it's one region or the other region. So that's pretty handy. The next bit is you're going to need a subscription for this. Uh, so it's $7.99 a month or €9.99 Euros per month. Uh, here's a chart down below. We'll talk about this chart more in just a second, but that subscription covers everything. So you're not going to use your existing carrier. You're going to use Garmin as one like cohesive sort of thing. In terms of setting this all up, uh, I'll say that for my full review, I'll just say it's a giant dumpster of a situation. It's a lot of apps, a lot of back and forth. It's just way more complicated than it should be. But once you get it set up, then you're good to go kind of forever. So just kind of keep that in mind. Oh, and last but not least on LTE, you can see the connectivity status at any point in time on the watch face there uh, at the very top or in the controls menu. And you can control whether or not and when it leverages LTE. So you can say, uh, use your phone's connection first using Bluetooth and then go to LTE. Don't use LTE at all. Uh, use satellite only, but not LTE. LTE, like there's a lot of options in this menu right here where you can just choose what you want it to do. And I'll give Garmin credit. That's one of the things that they're really good at is giving you options, maybe too many options sometimes, but in this case, I appreciate the flexibility to configure out exactly how I want it. Okay, so with that said, let's talk about probably the most exciting piece here, which is actually the satellite connectivity piece. Uh, they are basically taking wherever my inReach device went to, this thing here and sticking it inside of your watch. At least for the most part, kind of, sort of. So this is two-way satellite connectivity. Your existing watch already has GPS, which is one way. So basically it's looking at the GPS and it finds out where it is on Earth and life is grand. But this allows you to send messages back and forth. And what's notable about this is a couple weeks ago, Google announced a Pixel Watch 3, and with that, they announced uh, satellite SOS features, emergency SOS via satellite, being the first company to announce such a thing. And interestingly, they did it with Garmin Response. So if you got yourself in a pickle out in the wilderness somewhere, you could use this uh, anywhere in the coverage range and go ahead and contact Garmin's Response Center, which would then send a helicopter eventually to come pick you up or whatever it may be. That same thing is here on the Phoenix 8 Pro series, except you can also do regular text messaging as well as position check-ins, something you cannot do on the Google Pixel Watch at this point in time. So let's talk through how this works. Uh, again, you need the Garmin inReach slash LDE plan. It's all one plan that covers you for all the things, plan down below there, but you'll see a couple differences here. Notably that uh, those check-in and reaction messages as well as text messages are basically charged on a per message fee in the basic plan there. Uh, if you got the essential plan, you get 50 text messages included uh, and then unlimited check-ins and then you can you can read the plan down below. Pretty straightforward, right? Um, that's kind of annoying. And I'll talk about the emergency side in just a second as well and the pricing and my thoughts on that. So stay tuned there. Now, the first thing to know about Satellite Club here is it's not going to use satellite first. It's actually going to use your phone if that Bluetooth connection is there first. If it is, good, it's going to use that. That's probably the best possible connection to get you the help or whatever it is that you may need. If that's not available, then it's going to leverage the LTE on the watch. If that's not available, then it's finally going to go full on satellite. And it does this automatically and it escalates up as it sees fit. So when it gets to the point where you need to do a satellite connectivity, either for just innocent messages or uh, from an emergency standpoint, the first thing you see is going to do is to ask you to calibrate the compass. So this is calibrating the compass, the gyros, etc., because it needs to know this exact positioning to be able to find the satellite up in the sky. Uh, so it does that for a couple seconds. And then if you need to, you're going to get this next screen, which tells you to rotate a given direction to roughly face the satellite. Now, in Garmin's case, they're using geo satellites. Uh, different than Leo satellites. They use Leo for their, uh, the rest of the devices, in-reach devices like this, but they're using geo satellites here. Uh, and those satellites are provided by Sky though, the same constellation that Google's using for their Pixel watches. Uh, that means it does have a more limited coverage range than the entire Earth. Here's the current coverage range on the screen right there uh, for this. So basically about 50 miles from shore on the US side and then the European side that you see there versus the Leo satellites used by in-reach are basically covering the entire Earth. So you can be anywhere on Earth. Uh, that means that there's a lot of reasons why you 
should still have an in-reach device. And I'll talk about those in a separate video, uh, but the core reason being this thing tracks, you know, every uh, minute or whatever you set it to automatically uh, versus the watch, as you see, you have to point it somewhere. Uh, so back to this pointing thing. So in this case, uh, you've got the first picture here, which tells you to kind of orient your body the right way. And then the next piece here is to orient the watch to face the satellite. Uh, and this piece will take anywhere from like 15 to 45 seconds, 60 seconds in my experience here. Uh, and then from there, it'll actually send the message once it's locked on the satellite. And that piece is super quick. You can see here, I did this under these trees, like it's trees blocking my view. I don't got redwoods here, but I do have these trees and it did send through those just fine. Now again, you can do text messaging over this as well as location check-in. So that's super handy at the end of a day, for example, on a long hike in a wilderness scenario, you just wanna check into your contacts and say, hey, I've reached camp. That's perfect for this type of scenario. But again, it's not doing that live tracking over satellite. Uh, that's only live tracking over LTE, as well as voice messages and voice calling, et cetera. That's not happening over satellite. Now, here is my problem with this. Garmin is charging for the emergency SOS piece. And I know they've always done that on the in-reach side of things, but their competitors, in this case, Google with the Pixel Watch at 400 some odd dollars. And I'm gonna guess probably next week, some variant of an Apple Watch, uh, certainly cheaper than the Garmin Phoenix, will have it and probably also be free. In the case of Google, they're saying for two years. In the case of Apple, for the phone side of things, they said for two years, but it's like almost four years now, I think, and it's still free. And I don't think anyone's in a rush to charge, but Garmin, Garmin's in a rush to charge you for it. So if you go buy a $2,000 watch and have this on there, you're still gonna have to pay the $7.99 a month. And to me, I feel like the emergency side should always be free on these watches. And then if you want all the other texting bits and stuff, then they can charge for that. I have no problem with you charging for that, but I feel like the emergency side here for satellite should be free. Um, anyways, that's just my two cents. So let's talk about some more expensive things. Now, on the new Phoenix 8 Pro, there is a brighter display. This is the same display is used on the new Garmin 400 970, as well as the Venue X1 in terms of brightness. Those have slightly different displays in terms of like their shape and whatnot, but the same brightness level there for the Phoenix 8 Pro. However, there's also the new Phoenix 8 Pro Micro LED. And that has what Garmin claims should be the brightest uh, display on a watch out there, period. And I believe them. It's 4,500 nits with over 4,000 individual pixels. Uh, for context, your Phoenix 8 watch should be about 1,000 nits. Garmin's never disclosed it, but that's the general assumption here, about 1,000 nits. The 4970 and Venue X1 is probably in the 2,000 nits or so nit range. This is well more than double that. The Apple Watch Ultra 2 is at 3,000 nits. Like we're talking astronomically higher. But there's a lot of catches here, both in brightness and battery and price that we're going to, have to talk about. First off, let's talk about brightness. Uh, so yes, it is obviously brighter. Here's a dead on video showing the Phoenix 8 at the left, the Phoenix 8 Pro in the middle and the Phoenix 8 micro LED on the right hand side there. It's certainly brighter. That said, when I was out running, like you see right here, my eyes didn't see any obvious difference between these. Now you looking at this image would say, yeah, the Phoenix 8 uh, micro LED is definitely brighter than the Phoenix 8 Pro, but to your eyes, they don't necessarily see that. And the camera did. So just food for thought there on that. Uh, it's definitely not worth it to me. I had no problem seeing the Phoenix 8 Pro on this bright sunny day. So what really matters here though is the off angle brightness on the micro LED display. Here is a micro LED display. I'm gonna turn it on here at full brightness. There we go. And obviously it's bright facing you directly, right? But now watch as I go tip back and back and back and back and you can still see it right till there. Compared to the Phoenix 8 Pro, again, this is the Pro Edition without the micro LED back and back, and now we start to disappear more. Here's just a simply better image I shot out there with all three of them side by side, better video, whatever, and you can see that moment where it's like, oh wow, that's way brighter on the micro LED. Now, does that justify all the downsides? Now, let's talk about the downsides. The very first one is the battery life is way, way less. Here's a battery chart right there. You can see it's way less than the Phoenix 8 Pro, the existing Phoenix 8, doesn't matter which watch you choose, it's, it's a battery blowtorch, which is ironic because the entire promise of micro LED was better battery life, but not, not here. Um, which then gets to the next problem, which is the price. Uh, so let's talk about price overall here. Here's a pricing chart for the entire Phoenix 8 Pro series. Uh, first off, we have a $200 price bump from the Phoenix 8 Pro to the same edition of the 47 millimeter uh, Pro edition here now at $1,199. And then that micro LED version will set you back two grand, 2,000 uh, bucks for just a brighter display. That's the only difference there is a brighter display and crappier battery life. Look, I'm telling you right now, like it just simply isn't worth it. I live on a bright, sunny island of the Mediterranean and I have no problem seeing the display any of the displays from any Garmin watches in the last few years, and I certainly don't need to spend 2,000 bucks to see a display 
this angle when I can just tilt my wrist like this and it works just fine. But that's actually not the final problem. The final problem here, as you may have noticed by now, there's no 43 millimeter version. There's no small Phoenix sized version for any of this stuff. Uh, no small Phoenix sized version for LTE, none for satellite connectivity, nothing, which is just mind boggling. When I asked Garmin about this, they said basically it was technical issues in getting the antennas and all that junk to fit in a smaller sized unit without increasing the thickness uh, more because as you can see here by the thickness chart, all these things got chonk and big and thick uh, compared to the past. So they said the smaller edition Phoenix would be even bigger than the rest of them uh, and even more chunky than those, which I guess, but look, Apple and everyone else can make it work for LTE. I think users might have been a bit more understanding if Garmin had delivered LTE but not delivered satellite connectivity. And Garmin says that this isn't like the forever position, it's just that where their engineering is today, which I guess I get from an engineering standpoint, but ultimately to me seems like a massive slap in the face, especially to women with smaller wrists that want the safety features of LTE connectivity. So for example, my wife, when she goes out and does her long runs or whatever at night, uh, she'll often steal one of our daughter's bounce watches, which has LTE connectivity in it. Uh, so I have a way to track her and she has a way to get help if she needs it, right? She just wants that comfort there without necessarily taking a smartphone with her. And now she's got to either make a choice between this big old chunky watch um, or still carrying two watches. So here's what she thought after her first run wearing the new Phoenix 8 Pro, the 47 millimeter, which is the smallest one that they have. I will not be switching over. I functionally can't wear this watch. It's too big. It's too heavy. I've already got a bruise forming. And the fact that this watch doesn't have the possibility to call out for help if needed is, is an absolute shame. It's too bad, it's a really missed opportunity. In any event, if you do have a bigger wrist, this is probably what you want. For me, I primarily use the 47 millimeter uh, size of Phoenix, and this finally checks off all the boxes of what I want. Uh, it has the satellite pieces when I'm out in the wilderness. There's a lot of the trails just right out my front door here, back door, whatever door you want to talk about, they're out that door uh, that are outside of cellular connectivity. A simple 5K run puts me outside of cellular connectivity, and this solves that in case something happens outside that run. And then for the rest of the time, it allows my wife and friends and family to simply follow my uh, live track using cellular and that's perfect for me. So I am super happy with these changes. I'm not super thrilled at the $200 price increase, but tariffs, I guess, though the Europeans also get hosed here as well. So yeah. Anyways, full end-up review coming up soon. And again, tons more sports tech over the next few weeks. This is, this is only the first drop in the bucket. So uh, stay tuned. With that, have a good one.